w would you tell a story, um, if it isn't too painful, of something that involved you in a wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you sick of that? Can you stand you, you mean when I broke my foot yes. between the matinee and the evening performance in Los Angeles? Is yes. that what you're thinking that the of? Constant what were yes, you I play the constant wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went out for a bite to eat after the matinee. And as I walked back to the theater, for some reason, I can't believe it, I had eaten too much, but I did something to my foot, slipped like that, and I could hear it crack. And sure enough, I was in pain, and I dragged myself to the theater, and the company manager and everybody said, my God, we have to bring her to the hospital and get an x-ray because it might be broken. I came to the hospital, and it was broken. And he put me in plaster. And I was um, brought back to the theater where my understudy stood, all dressed in my clothes and my wig, and she was ready to go on. And. Uh, then uh, the box office people came up to me and said, uh, you realize that if you are not playing, half of the audience will want their money back, and um, we don't have that money to give them back. <laughs> so as if you are, once you are in uh, plaster, you're, you're uh, up to here, mm -hmm. it doesn't really hurt anymore. So they didn't get the wheelchair in time for the first act. I was carried in on a chair similar like this, and I shall never forget the eyes of my understudy. <laughs> and I passed her and I said, you have the worst job in the world. And she said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was carried in and placed on the stage. And it just so happened to be a play uh, where I could sit in a wheelchair. Of course, it would have been better if I could have moved around, but it was possible to play it sitting down all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we came to the third act, they had found a wheelchair. So I was now placed in the wheelchair. And um, I rolled myself in, and uh, I was very busy with this. I'd never been in a wheelchair before. So you wheeled yourself in, and then you had to put brakes on. And, and um, in the middle of all this, I looked at my leading man, and I said, I'm terribly sorry I've forgotten the dialogue. Out loud? Just so yes, said audience it out loud. The whole audience heard it, of course. The audience is liked it because this was a happening. It was something that you don't see on television. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, there I was. I was so, so I tried to remember the dialogue, and then I had to wheel myself out of the living room. That was the end of the play. It wasn't possible to, that a butler could come in and wheel me out. Oh. So I started to wheel me out, and I almost went into the audiences, right down into the footlights. Oh. And of course, it, we laughed all the way through it. It was a very gay evening. <laughs> Is it true that you hit the door on both sides trying yes, to get I out? Yes, it was very it? difficult. <laughs> then the, the, the day after, I had a little practice with a wheelchair. Mm. So I played the rest of Los Angeles in a wheelchair. Then I went to Denver and played in a wheelchair. And then when I came to Boston, I could get out of the wheelchair, but I couldn't put two shoes on, only one. So um, the stage manager used to go out and say that she's very sorry, but uh, you have to forgive her. She has just one shoe on. <laughs> the other foot is too big to get into the shoe. <laughs> so I limped through Boston. And then uh, somebody said, but are you not in the wheelchair any longer? And I said, no, I'm out of the wheelchair now. And uh, are you playing with two shoes? And I said, yes, now I can play with two shoes. I look perfectly normal. Oh, isn't it too bad? <laughs> 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 they were so looking forward to it. I almost I thought I'd keep it in when I came to New York. I was going to say, it's a, wonder, <laughs> it's a wonder someone didn't say keep it in. Uh, when, when, when your personal life is going badly, as it always seems to be with people in the business, this is an odd, I never asked anyone this before, but is it more comforting to be in a play at that time or in a movie? Oh, I wouldn't know if one or the other is uh, better or worse. I'll tell you why I ask that, because yeah. it seems to me, I, I did a play on Broadway, and I must come back to that for one second, but uh, you looked forward to that two hours a day when everything was predictable, and you knew mm -hmm. how it was going to work out. Mm -hmm. And there was something comforting about knowing that for those two yes. hours, everything would resolve itself yes, in it some way. Yes, it's the best the medicine other. in the world. As I was medicine. going to say, yes, yes, it is the best medicine, because you can be, you can be sick, you can have all kinds of problems, you can have fever, the doctor tells you to go to bed, but you, if you belong to the professional people and those troopers, they will go on the stage half dead. Yes. And when they come out of the show, they feel much better. 
and even personal sorrows and whatever you have, you just have to get rid of it because you must concentrate on the person you're playing. You can't go on thinking about, oh my God, think about me. You have to play the part. And if you can do that and get out of yourself, you see that is the best thing possible. You feel much better afterwards. That is remarkable, isn't it? You can know you're coming down with the flu and that if you stayed home, you would be miserable. Yes. And and you go do the performance, yes. and you're miraculously cured. Yes. Perhaps temporarily, but at yes. least it, it does work. Yes.